guys welcome back to my channel rewind that it's your girl miss k if this is your first time coming across my channel welcome make sure you like comment and subscribe turn that notification bell on so you know when i upload more videos like this one and i'd like to thank my new subscribers i appreciate you okay so we're going to be going over the, the latest episode of marriage boot camp hip-hop edition that's season 16 episode 6 okay so let's get right into it so everyone is still reeling over the whole situation right with choses and bianca how they found out that choses has a girlfriend outside of boot camp and bianca is actually his side chick like that's crazy right so anyway you know dr ish gave the other boot campers the power to vote and say whether bianca and choses could stay or not so you know bianca and choses are in the room while the other boot campers are downstairs and they're talking about it some of them are giving reasons why they should go and Styles P, who is rooting for them, keeps giving them reasons why they should stay, okay? Because he wants to protect the babies, okay, and keep the babies in the house. All right, so while Bianca and Choses are upstairs in the room, they're talking and Choses is saying, we were on the outs and we were just trying to get clarity on our relationship. Whatever he said to her, he was said he was basically saying to her the same crap that he told the group last week. I just kind of feel like the whole conversation was scripted as well. If the camera is not on them directly, they know that the cameras are still rolling and still around them. And they're not really having a private conversation as long as they have those mics on. So they know what they were doing. You know what I'm saying? I don't believe that Choses does not have a relationship outside of marriage boot camp. He has a girlfriend outside, okay? Um, I just feel like they're only saying, they was only saying that to save face so that they don't have to go home. That's it. They're trying to think they could fool the marriage boot camp production and Dr. Ish and all of them, but they really can't. But anyway, whatever. Come to find out, fast forward, they still won, right? They stayed in the house. Anyway, so every now and then, one of the boot campers would come in and check in on Bianca and Choses because they trying to like get their last... They're closing arguments, basically. All right, they want to see what Bianca and Choses have to say. And so Bianca keeps telling. She told Miss Chalet, I got this boy name tattooed on me twice, right? Okay. We not in a fake relationship. How could I be faking that? All right, so Miss Chalet leaves, and I think Jocelyn came in, and maybe Ajwa, I don't know. She told the same thing. I got this boy name, I got his name tattooed on me twice. <laughs> I got his name tattooed on me twice, okay? And the only thing I could think about was, okay, sis, listen. You got his name tattooed on you, all right? And that's not to say that y'all wasn't in a real relationship or nothing like that, but that more says about how serious you're taking it, okay? When y'all got matching tattoos, then you could say something. But while you got two tattoos on him and he ain't got none, and he got all these other chicks and another girl that's claiming him and that you you basically the side chick and he in a whole nother relationship, then don't even bring up them tattoos and play yourself like that, okay? So them two tattoos you got don't mean nothing to him, clearly. So don't speak like it means something to you. I know she was just saying it to prove a point and say that they're not in a fake relationship, but the point of the matter is that if he has a girlfriend outside a boot camp and you're the side chick right now and you're just coming in to see if y'all gonna work something out, Y'all don't need to be there. That's that's how I felt about it. Whatever. Everybody want to save the babies, but I think Bianca and Chosen should have went home. Okay, so I know I'm jumping ahead, but, you know, y'all already know what happened. So, um, but anyway, so Dr. Ish calls everybody downstairs to deliver the verdict. Okay, and I noticed that when Bianca and Choses was coming down, Choses had his arm around her and everything. I'm like, look at these two really selling it right now. You know, they all, you know, buddy, buddy and close up to each other. And I'm just like, yeah, go ahead and sell it. Your spot got blown. Anyway, so the group decides to keep the babies, like I said, even though they didn't appreciate feeling played. Jocelyn made sure she let that be known. And the number one person to me that wanted them to go home was Shawnee. She was not playing with them. She was like, listen, y'all, we all here with our one. <laughs> y'all shouldn't be here if he actually is with another chick. She wasn't feeling that. So I forgot to mention that before they came down to get the verdict that Bianca and Chosen is going to stay in the house, 
Chosen says that he gets a DM from somebody that Bianca used to mess with and he started pressing her about it. And she's just like, nothing happened. It was a boy that I was talking to or whatever, but I wasn't taking him seriously. And Chosen was like, he really is really bothering him because he can't even fathom that she actually considered getting serious with somebody. And it's like, wow, you really got a lot of nerve, pal. You could have a whole girlfriend, but as soon as you hear about her possibly moving on with somebody, or taking somebody else seriously, you have a problem. As long as Bianca is going crazy over him and making him feel like he's the only one and he can drive her nuts and give her anxiety and all that stuff, make her wanna kill herself and everything, he's fine and he can continue dogging her out. But as soon as she getting ready to bring somebody else in the picture, he can't handle it. It's a lot of nerve, I mean, come on. But that ain't nothing new, is it? <laughs> okay, so now the group gets ready for the next challenge, right? And in this challenge, they have to complete a series of tasks while they're in like this one suit. So both of them, each of the couples have to fit into one suit together. And not only do they have to do these tasks together, they have to wear the suit until further notice, like for the whole day. All right, so they got to do stuff like build together, bake together, jump rope together, cook together, you know, put what, like build, did I say build already? Build, put puzzles together, all that kind of stuff, all right? So of course, Dr. Ish, he wants to see how they communicate. That's the reason for this whole thing is he wants to see how well they communicate with each other and see where their faults lie in terms of not whose fault is it, but just to see what needs to be fixed in the relationship, where the errors are, right? Okay, so um, like I said, they got to do this all day. And Joc Jocelyn and Ballistic were actually doing fine until Ballistic, I guess, got a little irritated with Jocelyn. He said she was moving around too much or something like that. So since he was annoyed with her, she basically was talking to Shawnee and said he's a prick or something like that. So he was basically telling her, okay, remember those words and how you talk to me because his main thing is watch how you speak to me. Treat me like a king because I treat you like a queen. So he doesn't like to be disrespected, but Jocelyn was basically like laughing in his face like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what you say. And I was like, dag, Jocelyn, like you, one minute I feel like she's really trying to change the way she treats, she acts towards him. And then the next minute it's just like disrespectful. So anyway so like i said she starts laughing in his face and it was kind of like taunting him and uh he was just he was sitting back cool and everybody else was telling her okay calm down jocelyn you know and they were also saying like this is not the time to be fighting especially while y'all stuck together like come on now but you know she didn't really want to hear it she wants to talk about don't ever make threats to me don't ever make threats to me what's wrong with you <laughs> all right but she honestly she seemed like she was a little drunk so whatever but at the end of the day, Jocelyn was saying, when everybody was telling her to chill, she was saying, no, if he wants me to be nice, he got to be nice to me. And I get what she was saying because he did get irritated with her. It didn't seem like she was doing anything, really. She moved around a little too much and he got irritated. So I get what she's saying. It was kind of uncalled for. He needed to, I guess in that moment, have a little more patience because it's not her fault. Y'all stuck together because this is a challenge. So make it work. Some of the couples they got, they just sat down, had some wine, didn't even move around no more. Styles and Ajwa laid in the in the corner somewhere. I would have did the same thing and just make it work. I'm not getting if I don't have to move, I'm not moving because I'm not and I'm not trying to get irritated. So that was the whole thing. I think they were doing too much. Like they were doing too much walking around after all the tasks were done. Ballistic and Jocelyn were more, they was moving around too much. So that's probably why it was easier for him to get irritated. Next time, sit down somewhere. All right, so Dr. Ish calls the group to the uh, basketball court and he tells them that they can get out of their outfits, but they got to get ready to do this like obstacle course type of thing. So it's almost like a relay race thing. So one couple goes through the obstacle course, right? But they have to wear these drunk glasses or goggles, whatever they're called. So their vision is very blurry. So they have to make it through the obstacle course with this by the sound of their spouses or well, not spouse, by the sound of their mates voice and instructions. Okay. After they make it through the other couple, I guess they kind of got to tag the other one and the next one has to do the same thing. Okay. So 
Jocelyn and Ballistic did the best, according to Dr. Ish, because he said they communicated the best with clear instructions, they listened to each other, and they didn't get frustrated along the way. And this was even after their whole little drama, you know, but they, Jocelyn apologized to him and everything. That helped them to start off on a clean slate, so that was good. So they won a dinner night, and Miss Chalet and Stu lost. Okay, they always losing. So they had to serve them, okay? So Jocelyn and her men, they get the dinner. Stu and Michelle got to serve. So Stu basically has a bad attitude and he's a sore loser. So he is planning to ruin the dinner for Jocelyn and Ballistic, okay? Um, he's serving um, water from the hot tub and then he gives them raw salmon, all right? My thoughts on this whole thing was, I don't think that they should have got away with that, okay? If Jocelyn and Ballistic won a dinner, a nice romantic night, they should have got their reward, okay? Dr. Ish shouldn't have, shouldn't have let that go unpunished, you know? I feel like back in the, I don't want to say back in the day, but in other seasons, Judge Lynn, she used to dish out punishments. Like if you, there was this like box that she used to have that whoever did the worst, they would have to go in that box <laughs> and they have a punishment. I remember one time somebody had a punishment where they had to just have a tape over their mouth because they just talk too daggone much. They need to learn to shut up, right? So I just kind of feel like they should have did the punishment this time, you know? I know they're adults, but whatever. Like, this is what this Madge Boot Camp you sign up, and I just kind of feel like it was just wrong for him. I mean, come on, it's disrespectful. Hot tub water and then raw salmon. And then on top of that, Stu is a chef. It would have just been a perfect opportunity, like Jocelyn said. She said, this would be the time for him to show how good you can make a plate or something, she said, right? Basically, she's saying, this is the time for Stu to show off his skills. And as a chef, if I really loved my job and I loved what I do, I'd have been more than happy to throw down, you know? And he might have been doing that in the house all along anyway, I don't know. But the point is, for him to be such a sore loser, and he's actually doing something that he loves to do, it shouldn't be much of a punishment. Like, that just, that right there just annoyed me. And like I said, for Dr. Ish to let it go unpunished, I just wasn't feeling that because I feel like Jocelyn and Ballistic, they didn't get the reward that they should have gotten. That's all. Okay, now I don't know how in the world Michelle and Stu started going at it, but Jocelyn and ballistic, they went upstairs, they said, forget about this, this ain't working out. But Stu goes outside and I guess he's smoking a cigar or whatever. And Styles is out there as well. And Stu is like, you and your woman, y'all got it. Like she could just look at you and, and know what you're thinking. And Styles is like, different amount of time, brother. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, duh. Like how in the world could Stu compare his relationship to the longest relationship in the house when him and Michelle are the shortest relationship in the house. It's like, you can't compare them. You cannot compare yourself to Ajwa and Styles. Like you really gotta be out of your mind. So anyway, I was glad that Styles said that like, uh, duh, different amount of time, like, hello. <laughs> so anyway, they have their little meeting with Dr. Ish and they receive their notes and everybody except Stu, of course, because he just can't take advice for anything. He always got to, you know, say something. Everybody else just listens. He always got to say something back. All right. But anyway, so they end their night and almost everyone is talking about how draining the day was. And the way they handled it, it didn't seem like it was draining. So they was pretty good sports about everything, but... They was all laid out like, oh my gosh, that was the longest day. Or, oh my gosh, this day was terrible, you know, stuff like that. So that was kind of surprised to hear them say that because they really handled it pretty well. Anyway, so Choses, once again, brings up the fact that his day was mentally draining because he can't get the guy out of his head. The guy that Bianca was talking to when her and Choses was on the outs, okay? He can't get it out of his head. And she's like, you know what? I don't appreciate you bringing up names to me after all the stuff you put me through. Like, she's basically telling him nothing happened. She, you know, she made sure nothing happened between me and a guy. But I don't like that you question me down about this after all the stuff you done put me through. And he said, yeah, but I have the right to ask you all the questions I want. And I'm going to need you to understand that. 
And I'm like, wow, this guy is really nervy. This is the perfect example of a double standard. When he said that to her, he really showed himself. Like it showed that he's really about himself. Like he feel like this is his world, you know? And it goes the way he wants it to go. You can't mess with other dudes, okay? But I can have all the girls. I'm not into a monogamous relationship. But you, you could go crazy over me. You could cut yourself over me. Everything. This is how I'm. This is how I'm looking at it. Okay. To me, the way he was acting, I'm reading between the lines because Bianca done already said she's been. She contemplated suicide over this man, and for him to know that, and then have a problem with her potentially moving on with somebody, but she said she wasn't taking him seriously anyway. She just was entertaining him because of what she was going through, you know. And sometimes women do that, you know. And um, he just can't handle it. But if he doesn't change that attitude, there's going to be more problems for them to get over. And it can also become a little controlling on his part if he feels like it's a one-way street where he gets to do what he wants and then she can't dare. Don't you dare think about getting serious for nobody. <laughs> but why did somebody DM him, though? That's my thing. That's the question of the day. Why did somebody DM him? about dating or messing with Bianca. Anyway, so what do you guys think about that? A guy DMing another dude about the woman that they was with. That that sounds like female stuff. Like you normally hear about chicks hitting up another girl saying, I was with your man or whatever. Like you don't really hear about guys doing that. Maybe that's just something, I don't know, but let me know what you guys thought about this episode. Let me know what you feel about Chose's and Bianca's situation and how Chose said it was mentally draining for him to think about Bianca with somebody else. And hopefully that would be something to make him take her more seriously. You know what I mean? Because she's right. I don't appreciate you talking to me, asking me no questions about nobody, especially if nothing happened after everything that you done did. And especially if the dude has a girlfriend. Don't talk if you have a girl, okay? I'm going to tell you right now, Bianca is good, okay? Because you won't be able to say nothing to me at all. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you haven't already so that you know when I upload more videos like this one. You guys take care of yourself, be blessed, be careful, use hand sanitizer, wash your hands a lot, but don't panic. I know the coronavirus situation is, you know, it's, it's something to be cautious of, but you don't wanna panic, all right? But anyway, you guys be blessed, take care, bye-bye.